Hey, we're going podcast style. Hey, how's it going, guys? Omar here. And today I thought we'd do something fun. We would pretend to be CEOs and decision makers as opposed to the complainers and whiners that we really are. <laughs> a Fujifilm is as popular as ever. And if you go to try to buy a camera now, you'll see that most of the models and most of the lenses are either discontinued or completely backordered. Remember the days where you could just, you know, put a Fujifilm in your cart and uh, <laughs> have it arrive two days later? Right now, as of 2022-23, the Fujifilm X100V just exploded in popularity. And on the used market now, Fujifilms as of now, I've seen them as high as two, $3,000. And it's had a, an effect on other cameras that are not the X100. For example, the X-E4, there were a couple of YouTube videos that explained, hey, if you can't find an X100V, buy this camera. <laughs> so the X-E4 completely you know, uh, the stock went down on the X-E4, and now it is back-ordered. Believe it or not, even the Fujifilm X-T30 version 2, which was um, kind of a refresh of the X-T30, even that guy is completely discontinued, which is very interesting. Not discontinued, sorry, is, is um, back-ordered and maybe low in stock. Oh, by the way, the X-T5 is in stock, and, <laughs> and that's a kind of a new release. But um, just so you know, as, as of this point, this, by the way, also had an effect on alternatives to the X100V, one of them being a camera that I was going to pick up for a trip coming up, uh, which is to Italy. I wanted to do a little street photography, a little more stealthy, and it looks like I'm going to have to go with my X-T20 <laughs> because the GR3, both editions, the regular edition and also the the X edition, both of those cameras are also back ordered here in the US. Which brings us to our video. If we were CEOs of Fujifilm uh, with little knowledge of consumer behavior <laughs> or what the market will bear, let's just kind of play a little bit. So I would say missed opportunity number one or things that maybe we would work with moving forward is kind of jumping on the trend. The X100 seems to have caught fire. And I think a missed opportunity is like jumping on that train. So as the CEO, we need to get these cameras in the hands of influencers like Aquaman. Oh, he shoots Leica. If I was president or CEO, I would rush to release maybe special editions of the X100. Now, if the used market is <laughs> selling X100s for two grand and three grand, well, a titanium X100V or a graphite edition, <laughs> this is the X-Pro2 graphite edition, but it's so beautiful. The Ricoh GR has a couple of GR3s that are different editions, the street edition, and they just came out with one called the diary edition. And the camera hasn't been changed. And those cameras you are sold out already. And just like any trend, the trend is going to die. So I think it's a missed opportunity not to sort of capitalize or cash in on this TikTok craze uh, for the X100. And uh, you could pretty much charge anything, 2500 3000 whatever. The next missed opportunity or something that I would totally jump on is going smaller. The cameras are getting bigger. The X-H2 for Fujifilm, the X-H2S, which is totally fine. There's a market for that too a more professional grade, better grip camera. But Fujifilm, I think, has missed an opportunity in going the other direction. And, the, and we've called, <laughs> YouTubers and people on the forum have called, and groups have called for the re-release of the X, um, X70, uh, the re-release, the revamping of the X70 for so long. The GR3 as a street camera, where you can walk around and not be noticed because the camera looks like a little point and shoot junky camera that a tourist would use. That is great for capturing moments on the street. And I think there's a missed opportunity in going smaller. And by the way, the Fujifilm did make the X-T5 smaller, which is very welcome. So they're definitely thinking, hey, let's get back to our roots. So the X-T5 was reduced in size, 
although not as small as probably some of us, I definitely am completely drawn to all the small cameras and all the small lenses. Fujifilm has recently been revamping their lenses, like the 18 millimeter 1.4 and the 33 millimeter 1.4. Those get great reviews. I tried the 33 millimeter 1.4, fantastic lens. But again, they're bigger. And I, I'm kind of a fan of, I don't have it here, but the, oh, here's one. Look at this fun, trendy thing. Our pink XA, this is my daughter's camera, <laughs> but this right here, tiny, small. This could be our GRX Fuji Niner. Okay, the next missed opportunity I wrote down is a film simulation refresh. I love the film simulations, but they're different in every version. If you go to the earlier Fuji films versus the next versus the next, they don't match at all. That's one thing. So maybe just rethinking the film simulations where they actually look like film, huh? <laughs> as opposed to being kind of like a color shift that is put on the Fujifilm. Okay, next missed opportunity, jumping again on the train of the X100, is taking inspiration from the Leica Q line. The Leica Q2 and recently released Q3 have a very fast fixed lens, 28 millimeter 1.7, and a large sensor. They have a sensor of 45 megapixels in the Q2 and now 60 megapixels in the Q3. Why don't we release a very expensive, beautiful titanium fixed lens, we can make it 27, so there's no lawsuits, 27 millimeter, 1.8, uh, not 1.7, um, <laughs> fixed lens that is kind of in that body style and sort of compete with Leica a little bit, you know? But imagine if we use the GFX sensor on some, well, now we have and the last thing for R&D, um, for research and development, is I don't think cameras are innovating fast enough when it comes to phone technology. For example, the, the Google Pixel recently had features where you can remove people or you can bring back images that were out of focus. The whole phone to camera divide continues year after year after year. What if we can shoot on here and post from here? And I think we're talking three, four, five years down the line. Will cameras have SIM cards in them? Will they be able to connect a little bit more seamlessly with your phone? And uh, I mean, no one has even come up with a cable connection. Why does it have to be wireless? Why don't we have a cable connection where you plug into your phone and all of a sudden, you know, your car can have Apple, you can have Apple CarPlay. Why can't we have app, uh, Fujifilm Apple Play here with the apps, you know? So thinking down the road, now, of course, we know nothing about marketing companies or collaborations with software companies <laughs> and what it takes to put Android in a camera. But imagine your street camera where you can photograph, sit down at the coffee shop, and use it kind of like to post, you know? I'm getting on it right now. So let me know in the comments what we should work on and what do you want to see in the future of... All right, I'll see you guys next time.